Hello there programmers and welcome to another video in our uh, Flask tutorial series. So this episode what we're going to talk about is HTML templates and um, displaying them as part of our Flask application as well as loading dynamic data into those templates so that we can uh, create responsive web applications uh, that will load whatever data we need to display within them. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump straight in uh, on this tutorial. I went ahead and created a new um, PyCharm project. We're going to call this one HTML templates. And um, as usual, the very first step that we're going to do uh, when we're working in a Flask app application is inside of the virtual environment for the project, we're going to do pap, uh, pip install Flask. Uh, this will run through all the requirements. Now I want I want you to notice something here as I'm going through here. Um, there is a package in here called Jinja2 that's being installed as part of Flask. It's one of the requirements to run Flask. This is actually the um, package that we're going to be using today to use all of these HTML templates. Okay, so um, that's uh, I'll, I'll talk more about Jinja 2 when I get into uh, the nitty gritty details of that. But here we go. Let's go ahead and create a new Python file. We're just going to call this one main dot. Uh, we're going to call this one main. We'll start it up and then um, as usual, I'm going to start with a dunder name equals dunder main. OK, and um, we will just do an app dot run here. Now, um, let's go ahead and define app. So we're going to go from Flask, import Flask itself. And then we need one other thing here. We need a render template uh, to work with this. Then we can create app is going to be Flask, and we'll give it the name. All right, so now we have a basic Flask application ready to go. Now, um, we're going to set up a route. So we're going to use app.route as a decorator. And um, for this route, we're just going to do the home, uh, the, the root path for now. And then we're going to call this one home. And then we can just for now return hello. Okay. So this is just a really basic application. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. If we run it here, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll go ahead and pull this, pull a window in here so we can see what's happening in the background here. So we have uh, hello here being displayed on the page. All right. Awesome. Um, so now we have a basic Flask, Flask application up and running. We have the root directory. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to create an HTML template and load that instead of a raw string. Okay. To do this, we go ahead and we create a new folder at the root of our project. And that uh, directory is going to be called templates. Okay. So this is important. All right. And inside of templates, we're going to create a new HTML file. All right. And we're going to call this index.html and it's going to be html5 go ahead and hit enter this will inside of pycharm this will this will generate all the uh, boilerplate html code for you i'll give you just a second here if you want to pause and put all this in if you don't have pycharm installed um, you can go ahead and put all these in uh, so we're going to create doc type html this is how we define an html5 document um, as well as the english language as uh, what we're doing and utf8 as our character set now, uh, let's go ahead and change the title. Uh, let's just call this uh, HTML template demo. Okay, something like that. And then down here in the body, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a static header. And I'm going to say this is a rendered page. Okay, so if we hit save, now we have an HTML file called index.html. To actually use it inside of Flask, we can go back to our main application. Um, and what might make this easier is if I split this vertically here so that you can see the HTML over here on the right, and then you'll see the main over here, main.py. 
And what we can do is we can replace this static string that we have. And let's go ahead and render the template. So that's what we included up here, render template. And then we pass in index.html. If we stop and restart, you'll see here, um, we can go back to this window uh, and refresh. And now you can see this is a rendered page. Okay. So um, we have our HTML page being loaded. It's loading in an, an H1 header and we're rendering the text that we expect to, to show up here. So this is how you load just a basic static HTML page. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now, how do we pass in uh, dynamic content? So let's go ahead and say, uh, we're going to change this route just a little bit. We're going to create another route and we're going to call this uh, user. Okay. So we're going to say app dot route and we're going to do user slash and then we're going to say the name of the user. And then we're going to define the user route and we're going to pass in the name. Okay. Now we can return. Uh, render template and um, let's go ahead and create user.html okay and over here in our templates we'll go ahead and create a new HTML file and we're gonna call this user all right so let's pull this over here on this other tab uh, and here we're gonna say user demo and then um, now that we've got this this working, what we're going to do is we're going to start passing in data. OK, so what we can do is we can define inside of our render template uh, variables that get passed in to the Jenja template. OK, and so I told you earlier, Jenja 2 is going to be important. What we're actually using here is not truly HTML. It is what is called a Jenja template in the case of index.html. Rendering a Jenja template with just static HTML produces static HTML. What we're going to do now is a little bit different. We're going to pass in a variable and we're going to say, let's say content. Let's call it content. It doesn't matter what we call it. Um, we can call this literally anything, uh, but we'll call this content and we'll set the content equal to the name. Now, what's important here is the name that you use here. Okay. We can come over here and we can say H1 and then we'll use double curly brace and content and then close the double curly brace. What this is doing is the single curly brace starts a Jenja um, block. And then the second curly brace is telling the Jenja block, we're going to pass in a raw variable here. In this case, the raw variable is content. So if we save this and we refresh, okay, so we refresh the application, we're already running. This is, we know that we're running. Now let's let's go into user slash Chris and we'll use capital C just to make this really clear here. So I'm passing in capital C Chris and you can see now we have the user template is rendering with the string that I pass here. And now I can say Chris F. I can change this to just being Chris with a lowercase c. Whatever value I pass here in the URL is what's being rendered to the page. OK, um, so the way we're doing that is we're passing in the content variable and then we're just writing that content variable into this H1 block. But that's not all we can do. We can start to add more and more complicated uh, Python constructs and pass those in as the as the content. OK, um, and it doesn't have to be called content and it, we can actually pass in multiple things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's demonstrate here. Um, let's, let's say we want to pass in an integer value. So we're just going to say X equals, um, 42. Okay. And then here we'll create a new line and we'll say, um, H2 and we'll say, um, we're going to use X. Okay. Now, if I refresh the page, stop and rerun, I come over here. I refresh the page and now I have 42 showing up here on the page. So that's static variables. Let's do something a little more complicated. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, mute this so that 
when people text me, you don't hear it. Um, let's go ahead and create a block of code, okay? So I'm going to tab these in just so that it's clear that we're inside the body tag here, okay? And then I'm going to tab in here, and I'm going to create a block of Python code embedded inside of the Jenja template, okay? The way I do that is I open curly brace and then I use the percent sign. This is saying this is a block of executable code. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, let's say for y in range uh, of 10. Okay. So we're going to do a range here and then we use the percent uh, close curly brace to say we're done with this top block. Now, to close out a for block, in Jinja templates, what we do is we use percent, and then we say end for. This is the syntax we use for every kind of block that we want to do. So if we're using an if, we'll use end if. If we're using a while, we'll do end while. And so all the, all the types of block operators that we can use in Jinja templates, we will have a corresponding end block as well. Okay. So inside of here, let's go ahead and embed um, some uh, uh, paragraph tags here. And then we'll use y and print that out for y in range of 10. Okay, so let's restart this, stop and rerun. We'll come back over here and we'll refresh the page. And now you can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we counted the entire range, 10 numbers, starting at 0 up to 10, non-inclusive. Okay. So what else can we do here? Well, we can do a lot of a lot of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and create just a, a basic class. Okay. Um, so up here at the top, we'll say class demo. And um, we'll do a def dunder init and uh, let's set self dot name equals um, my demo okay something like that now what we can do is we can instantiate in here um, we can say uh, demo equals new demo all right and we can pass in demo equals demo okay so now we're gonna pass in a, a demo object and let's do uh, an h3 here and inside of here we're gonna say demo dot name okay so we're gonna access this object we're gonna access the name property of this demo object and let's go ahead and rerun it so when we refresh this page there you go you can see the name of the object being passed in. So hopefully you can see the power of this. Inside of Flask, we can use Jenja2 templates to pass in uh, a lot of different uh, data into our HTML page and render all of that data to the, to the page. We can use static HTML templates, and then we can use dynamic HTML templates. And this gives us a lot of power to build super great, super powerful, and super fast to build uh, websites and web apps. Okay, uh, that's all. I, that's all I have for this topic. I hope to see you in the next lesson. We'll we'll dig into a lot more details about Flask and some of the power and things that we can do inside of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.